so you're, it's, you're very lucky to be here for this last piece of our conference with the presentation of the Golden Slate Award. I'm the lucky one today who gets to bring up our next very special guest who'll be presenting our award. You'll recognize him as an actor with over 50 guest star and nine series, <coughs> I'm sorry, nine series regular television roles to his credit. You've seen him in the last five seasons of Grey's Anatomy as Dr. Ben Warren and as a regular on Mistresses. He's also known for work on such films as Play in the Field, With This Ring, which is of East End and Barbershop. And you may have seen him recently at the Pasadena Playhouse in the well-received production of 12 Angry Men. When he's not performing, he turns his attention to educating and engaging with other artists and youth groups. And it is my pleasure to introduce Jason George. And he's probably taller than me. How are y'all doing today? Uh, I am very excited to be here uh, to help present this award to a very dear friend of mine. Um, to give you an idea of how much I love this woman, I was shooting in Memphis last night <clears throat> until midnight <laughs> and then got on a 6 a.m. plane um, because I love this woman. So um, the California Golden State Award was created to recognize an industry professional who has championed filming in California, someone who has made a determined effort to keep his or her, see what I did there, right? The anticipation's killing you, right? Um, keep their shows in California and to use our unparalleled production talent and infrastructure, someone with a body of work that serves as proof of those efforts. My friend, Betsy Beers, is just such a person. That's right, give it up for Betsy Beers, give it up. She and her producing partner, Shonda Rhimes, have produced multiple series. You can also give it up for Shonda Rhimes if you want to do that. It's, it's, it wouldn't be the first time. They, they've produced multiple series here in the Los Angeles area. You may have heard of some of them. Get your woos ready. They have names like Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, The Catch, uh, they've created enough great content to have their own night of television that they have branded. And all the shows I just named, by the way, are shot right here in California, using California crews, the best in the country. <clears throat> but we're not only celebrating Betsy for the thousands of in-state production and production-related jobs Shondaland series have generated, which, by the way, you know, Betsy, thank you for letting me have a job and see my family every day. Um, we're also recognizing her for her commitment to diversity. And I do mean commitment. Let's give it up for diversity. Thank you very much. Now listen, plenty of producers are content to put one or two people of color in their production and then pat themselves on the back for having done the right thing. But at this very conference last year, I sat on a panel with someone who, without any prodding whatsoever, shared a story about how receptive Betsy and Shondaland were when it was suggested that their already extremely diverse shows could be even more diverse by, say, including performers with disabilities, for example. Well, true story, a couple of weeks ago, I turned on a recent episode of Scandal, and in one simple camera pass through the White House, I saw multiple skin colors and ethnicities, I saw a balance of genders and ages, I saw a woman in a hijab, and I saw a woman in a wheelchair. None of this was a focal point of the scene, of course. It just depicted an ordinary day, and that's what made it so extraordinary. It just brought a smile to my face because for me, Betsy and Shondaland define what it means to do good and do well. Make a good product that will make you good money. She makes good money but also they take the opportunity to do some good, to send a positive message. We all see, and much has been said about Shondaland's diversity on screen, but not as many people are aware that Shondaland routinely hires women and minorities to write, produce, and direct its shows. Both in front of and behind the camera, Shondaland accurately reflects the true American scene. 
And they've done this since their first show, and with their success, established a new industry model. Success despite inclusion of diversity is a dead paradigm. Thanks to Betsy Beers and Shondaland, the industry knows now that the greatest success is because of inclusion of diversity. When Betsy and Shonda won the Directors Guild of America's 2014 Diversity Award, DGA President Paris Barkley said, in the decade that Shonda, it was a while ago, it's, they've been around for a minute. In the decade that Shonda and Betsy have been creating and producing buzzworthy television, their record of diverse hiring has been consistently outstanding at a time when very few television series met that standard. They are strong and outspoken advocates for diversity throughout our industry, and we are very proud to recognize them with the DGA's Diversity Award. Yeah, but don't, don't get it twisted. Betsy still has ambition. I often joke whenever I see her, so, so uh, what part of the world is Shondaland trying to conquer now? And often my answer comes when I read in the trades about their new shows coming up. This season they have two new series, or there may even be a third. There's uh, Still Star Crossed, which premieres May 29th, uh, and I know that there's a, a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy that's supposed to be happening. And they also have For the People, which premieres next spring. And because, you know, I have friends in high places, and I like to do things for people, I get to give you people a little sneak peek of For the People right now. Let's take a look. When the door opens, you can go in first. I know you were here first. It doesn't matter. If it didn't matter, you wouldn't be here first. Assistant United States attorneys to the right, federal public defenders to the left. You can sit together if you like, but if I've learned anything after 27 years of doing this is that you don't like to sit together. This is the mother court, the oldest, most prestigious, highest profile trial court in America. The cases are hard, the stakes are high, the lawyers on the other side are better than you. Some of you won't succeed. Some of you are not worthy. Are you worthy? You're up against the United States government, and the government almost always wins because they have all the power. This is your first case. I expect you to win. Can I ask you a question? I don't want to be the help desk for every man in this office too lazy to look something up for himself. Were you too lazy to look this up for yourself? I can look this up myself. What's the charge? Your client tried to blow up the Statue of Liberty. It's bad for this office. It's bad for the FBI. Don't be scared, kids. Your parents love each other even when they fight. We're not done. All right. Yankees tickets? He's the enemy. No, the Red Sox are the enemy. He's the adversary. If you go to trial, you are going to lose. Is that how you want to start your career? Leonard doesn't think you're ready for this case. Well, he's right. Neither one of us is ready for a case like this, but I'm at least humble enough to recognize it. I've never been a fan of humility. You let him steal your case? These people are sharks. I'm just trying to keep my head down. No intent, no crime. Let's work something out here. You could be a good lawyer yeah. if you tried. You're kind of ruining the moment. We're not having a moment. <laughs> I want to steal all her tabs and binder clips and throw them in the East River. Are you nervous about the trial? No. I'm going to win. That's what I'd be nervous about. I'm not getting off this case. Neither am I. This is it, then. This is it. Passing the last exit. There it goes. I need to be reassigned. Because of your boo? Like savage. We needed to pressure you to make a deal. I did what I had to do. They have the power, but we have the outrage. Use it. Your government tried to make a terrorist. That man is not a criminal. They made him. They're young, they're hungry, they're smart. Let them fight it out. Like savages. I can I tell you a secret? Mm. I like being a lawyer. So you got that to look forward to. And uh, oh, by the way, uh, when I found out the show was picked up, uh, I shot a little email to Betsy and asked, where are you shooting that puppy? In California. <laughs> it, it makes a difference. I can tell you, look, the product is always going to be better when an actor, costume, or a director can walk right into the executive producer's office at any time to try and improve their project. 
So while we celebrate the fact that productions and production jobs continue to return to California thanks to our expanded tax credit program, we also celebrate an individual today who chose to film many of her projects here and as a result has greatly contributed to the state's economy and helped to preserve one of California's signature industries. Now let me, let me give you a quick story that illustrates the kind of producer Betsy is, but also I think may pinpoint the exact moment when Betsy realized that shooting in California was a cut above the rest. I first met Betsy Beers on my first foray into Shondaland doing a pilot called Inside the Box about a group of determined and passionate journalists in Washington, D.C. The show didn't go because, you know, there's not much drama in a story about journalists in the White House. <laughs> yeah. That one still stings. I like that show a lot. Um, but the pilot shot right here in L.A. using parts of Glendale to double for D.C. Uh, I was introduced to this executive producer, Betsy Beers. Tall, golden-haired, extremely funny, mouth like a sailor. That's right, Betsy, I said it. She actually made the set fun. Easygoing and relaxed, Betsy made all of us in the cast feel at home. I honestly remember thinking that she's got the best job in the world. She just entertains the troops. The shoot went flawlessly with a happy cast and crew. Now, cut to my second foray into Shondaland. We were doing a pilot for a show called Off the Map about doctors in a developing nation on the edge of the rainforest. Sort of like, you know, Doctors Without Borders, but with a lot of sex. Um, <laughs> Because of the tropical location, we shot the pilot in Puerto Rico. And the look was great. The crew? So uh, we're in Puerto Rico, and I'm sitting at Video Village shooting the bull with Betsy as always, and I start to notice that she's not giving me her usual full attention. She's kind of glancing around. And finally, she says, uh, excuse me. She sets down her massive binder, gets up, walks out of the room. The next thing I know, Grown men start running past the door, speak, speaking lightning fast Spanish in anxious tones. Suddenly stuff was happening, you know, electricians were hanging lights, camera operators were setting the shot, grips were, you know, gripping or whatever the hell it is that grips do. <laughs> and then Betsy walks back in, calmly picks up her massive binder and says, I'm sorry, you were saying? <laughs> From these experiences I learned two things. First is that California crews set a high bar and a fast pace. That's a far cry from crews used to a more relaxed island speed. <laughs> the second thing I learned is that Betsy Beers is in fact the Ginger Rogers to Shonda Rhimes Fred Astaire. <laughs> a perfectly matched partner, able to execute the most difficult maneuvers and situations thrown at her. A woman in effortless command, demanding hard work, but making that hard work fun all while dancing backwards in heels. For her commitment to California production and diversity and all she has contributed to our industry and to our state, it is my honor to present the California Golden State Award to my friend, Betsy Beers. <laughs> Betsy, darling. There it is, right? I'll just point at it. <laughs> just point to it. Just kind of point at it. That was so sweet. And by the way, that's sort of a true story about Puerto Rico. <laughs> I don't think I was dancing as much as I was cursing like a sailor and throwing shit at people, but that's probably more <laughs> likely what I was doing. <sighs> um, yeah, I first met Jason shooting that pilot in 2009, and I just have to tell you, we would have done anything we could, including lock him in a room for five years so that he wouldn't work with anybody else. So he would be free for us for Grey's Anatomy. And it's our third show together, and I couldn't be happier. Um, okay, right? And isn't he great? And he's as nice as he seems, which is really irritating. Okay, so Russian Hill, Paradise Cove, a tidy house in Santa Rosa. 2270 Beaumont Drive, Lone Pine, Edwards Air Force Base, Hotel de Coronado, Malibu Creek State Park. What do all these places have in common? You guys, they all inspired me to get the fuck off Long Island. Okay. Those are the locations of Bullet, The Rockford File, Shadow of a Doubt, Shampoo Bonanza, I Dream of Jeannie, Some Like It Hot, M.A.S.H., 
The list is endless. Those are all real locations, all here in California. Okay, so I grew up in this very polite and really waspy section of the North Shore of Long Island where, yes, even the dogs are blonde. <laughs> and those places served as a lifeline to this exotic world. Of course, I loved the stories and the characters, but as much as that was the case, what really got me was the location porn, like palm trees, <laughs> swimming pools, movie stars, the coast. I lived on the East Coast, but the West Coast, it didn't need an East or a West. It was just the coast. And really, that coast was Southern California. OK, so my father was a diehard New Yorker and an agent who cast live television in the 50s. And when that business moved to Los Angeles, he wouldn't go. Even when his beloved Brooklyn Dodgers defected, he wasn't moved. <laughs> he still, he rooted for the team and he cursed the sunshine. But despite his hatred of the beach and his love of Broadway, we would go west together every day. Because we watched a lot of movies and television and it was all California, all the time. And I certainly list the history of studios and the story of early Hollywood and Folks, those palm trees, they were screaming at me. So when I finally loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly, and by the way, the Hillbillies house, just so you're sure, it, it was not actually in Beverly Hills. It was 750 Bel Air Road, if we're being really, really careful. Um, so I actually discovered um, that there was like everything here. I mean, there was really a restaurant called L'Orangerie, where on Heart to Heart, Jennifer and Jonathan Hart used to eat all the time. It was a real restaurant, you guys. I, my mind was blown. I couldn't afford it, which was really a pain in the ass. And there was like a Griffith Observatory that had a purpose outside of the big sequence from Rebel Without a Cause. Like, so weird, but actually true. You can do other stuff there, you guys. It was amazing. And I got to tell you, since making the transition from TV to, like, TV to films, from films to TV that way, um, and teaming up with Shonda, I've had the opportunity to work in Los Angeles almost full time and I'm in heaven. A movie buff, I inhabit the former Columbia Chief Harry Cohn's office. I shoot grays on a soundstage that filmed the jazz singer. LA, right? I mean, like crazy balls. LA can do anything, be anything. LA's provided Philadelphia for us and how to get away with murder. It's been Washington for scandal. It's Seattle for Grey's Anatomy and for a spinoff, which is coming to a TV soon near you. Its own glorious beachy Los Angeles for private practice and mid-century glam for the catch. And on both shows, I like to think we did the city proud in the porn department. <laughs> and next year, it's going to be Manhattan and for the people. And even though the shows are all set all over the country, I sleep in my own bed at night. And we'll have five shows filming here this coming TV season. Five shows, you guys. I hope they're soon. And look, the honest truth is, in fact, the only way we can keep growing and we can keep, still keep making TV shows is to do it the old-fashioned way, which is film them here, in one place, at home, in L.A. Right? Yeah. Um, I can't enthuse enough about the facilities, the services the city and state provide, the patient neighborhoods that allow us to film, the not-so-patient neighborhoods that allow us to film. <laughs> The weather, well, the exception of last winter, where it kind of sucked, but the weather is almost always on our side. The crews, which are deep and diverse and terrific and have me spoiled. And last, but certainly not least, the catering and crafty and food trucks are simply the best. I just want you to know I was shooting a movie in Italy and the craft service was a prune and a hard-boiled egg. That's a true story. So here's to the food of LA, because and by the way, a side note, have you guys had the dirty cookie truck? It is freaking amazing. Oh my God, it's just amazing. Um, on the subject of cruise, I also want to give one piece of encouragement because it's super easy to diversify here. It's all of our responsibility to get a range of backgrounds and gender and races to make up our shows from the folks on the screen to the many people who toil behind the camera. It'll make your show better. I promise. Different perspectives and different experiences lead to conversations and to more creativity, which means success. And as Jason alluded to, more money. <laughs> and everyone loves money. Because you know what you can do then? You can buy that cookie truck for your diverse crew. <sighs> I want to thank the California Film Commission and Flix for acknowledging me for this award. 
And thank you for making the city so film friendly, for tirelessly working to make it affordable and accessible. Thank you ABC and Disney for their sponsorship and as importantly for providing such a wonderful home for our shows for all these years. I share this award with all my Shondaland family, our cast and crews, with the studios and vendors and businesses that make it possible for me to do my job. And a special shout out to the location department, which is clearly near and dear to my heart. And finally, <laughs> locations. How you do it, I don't know. And finally, I need you to know this honor means a lot to me, because it's not just for me. It's for my father. He stayed where he was. He made the right decision for himself. But spending those hours on his lap, watching and learning, he gave me the passion for the work that I do now. It pushed me to go the one place that he wouldn't, a place I've grown to love and where I call my home. And God knows, Dad, I still root for the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Shut up. Sit down. Get your asses down there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's heavy. It's heavy, you guys. <laughs>